Hello everybody, welcome back. Kerbal Space Program Part 3. Let's do this thing. So in the last episode, we are riding high because in the last episode, Jebediah survived. I thought he was dead. I thought we'd lost our Jeb. But no, he was okay. And we now know, we have now figured out that you can parachute down multiple final stages. We were working on... Brave new world of transport. Do we want the auto save one or the not auto save one? Oh, that's right, it crashed, didn't it? Hmm. I hope. I mean, I hope there's not some inherent problem with it that means it crashes. Let's uh, let's stick a mech jeb on it, and let's just launch this one more time. Oh, yeah, that lag on the mech jeb is uh, is interesting. Hmm. Yeah, let's try launching it one more time and just check. Hey, super Gaela. No, Goyla. <laughs> Goyjilla. <laughs> I might give up, I'm sorry. <laughs> let's try one more time. <clears throat> Fire all these. Get rid of that lot. Yeah, didn't do the loss. Okay, well, we're just going to do one more try. Uh, there's no one else in it. Wait, Valentina? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Where's my Jeb gone? Jeb. Where's Jeb? Did it... You actually got it on the second pronunciation. Super... Gail... <laughs> Goigla. Super Goigla. Did we leave, did we crash and thereby, yeah, they're still out here, landed. Oh, okay, cool. So when it crashed, it was just on the trying to return these to ship. Okay, so that's fine. Super Goigla. Right, here come a vessel. And don't crash, please don't crash. Pretty, pretty please. Yes. Okay, recovered all them. And, uh, yeah. Super Godjla. Good. Good gel. <laughs> oh, you can just recover from this screen. Okay, cool. Recover. Recover. No science. A couple of parts recovered, and we've got these guys back. Cool. <clears throat> okay, so we don't need to worry about the crash. So we can build our rocket that's going to put our four tourists in space and earn us a bunch of money. We would like the Brave New World of Transport. It's the same number of parts, so I have to imagine the non auto save one is fine. Okay, four parachutes. Right, sorry, <clears throat> just to clear my throat there. So as it turns out, four parachutes is excessive, but I've remembered. Um, no, no, so let's go down to two. Oops. We're going down to two. And we're going to make um deploy it 2500 or well i mean no let's just keep it maxed out for safety because i don't know like what pressure is there is at what height so let's just do that it's fine if you call me super g <laughs> that's true super g does work all right drop all of the stuff below here okay so that is what we want we need yeah heat shield there yeah and we know these things survive re-entry and make it down to landing. Okay, we're not going to worry about science. This is purely an exercise in getting this thing into orbit and then back down again. These fire simultaneously with these. And let's just check these are flying at the right height. Okay, so this is what we need to put into orbit. To do that, we're going to have a final stage. I'm told, alright, so Gandalf tells us that spaghetti staging makes no difference. So let's experiment. Let's do a simple experiment to test if that's true. We're going to use just reliant engines, zero gravity turns, and we're going to see if you go higher, if you, uh, if you just burn straight up, do you go higher with or without not spaghetti staging, asparagus staging, with or without asparagus staging. 
and we shall discover whether or not we can, we don't need to use it in the future. Because if we don't need to use it, I mean, we might as well not. Although it is cooler. <laughs> so, step one. With... Where are my fuel ducts? So they are. With, sta with the asparagus staging. Uh, if we're going straight up, do we need fins? Uh, I think we still do. We need those control surfaces. That's uh, that's inconvenient. There we go. Uh, no, not the super deluxe winglet. The there we go. Okay. Awesome. All right. So let's just see. We're gonna go straight up. And we're going to find out if we still need it. I didn't put any launch assists, but it should be. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, it's wobbling a bit. Uh, launch when it's pointing the right way. Okay, and now. I mean, I didn't hit space. And now. There we go. Ooh, it's all lit up. The new, uh, new mission console system has much more lighting on it. That's cool. So, we're just going to see how high the epilepsis gets. The SAS isn't doing great. But for the sake of a fair test, I think I'm going to not touch the controls at all. Hey, Jake, how you doing? I'm not going to touch the controls at all, except to jettison these ones at the right moment. Are they going to hit it? Oh, I don't think they will. Oh, this is going to go for a while, isn't it? Because <laughs> without spaghetti staging, you carry more weight higher in the atmosphere, and just higher in general. Right? No. Yeah. So it must be more efficient to use spaghetti staging. But I like I like the idea of running an actual test. <clears throat> Excuse me for a second. Need to clear my throat. Okay. So. 395,000. Okay. Interesting. That should be a comma. Oh no, I learned about it the other day. Not safe for work alert. Your rocket looks like a popular vibrator. <laughs> Does it now? I'll take your word for it. Three hundred ninety-five thousand. So if we don't use spaghetti staging, we're in, we're you know very 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 slightly lighter. Okay. SS. Try and get it pointing the same way. Okay, let's see how high this one goes. And after this little bit of, you know, slightly mundane, oh, I didn't put the air guys, and for, keep forgetting you have to put them in every time, you can't save crew positions. Alright, you guys, they've got some experience, these are veteran tourists. Okay. SAS. Oh, <laughs> it nearly fell over. <laughs> Launch. <laughs> look at them. They don't look happy. See, Jared I knows what's up. He looks more cheerful. <laughs> see, now they look better. Alright, so let's see how much higher this one goes. Sorry, how much less high this one goes is my expectation. Because the engine, these engines will run for longer, but then when these ones die, all of them die. So, my expectation, and if I'm honest, my hope, is that it gets less height. You do have greater thrust when higher in the atmosphere this way. Which might be good, because you want less thrust when you're lower because of... Uh... No, excuse me. See, so there you go, it's much less low. 
Imagine if they paid £250,000 every time they launched. Yeah, these freaking tourists, they better be smiling. All right. Yes, spaghetti. Our, I keep calling it freaking spaghetti. Asparagus staging is definitely still needed. Okay. Good. I'm happy about that. Now, I think all we need to do, uh, pretty much, is whack a couple of extra... Let's just, let's just redo this bit. Whack a couple of extra fuel engine, fuel uh, containers on this thing, and we should be pretty much good to go. I think we can probably get to orbit with, uh, with this, like that. And then another one of these on top. This might be more than enough, actually. I think this might be enough. These things are pretty heavy. It might, you know what we could do? It might be more efficient to take them all up at once. Should we try? I think we should try. So actually what we can do is just duplicate this part. And this part. And then this part. It's a monster! <laughs> Alright. So we're going to take every single tourist. <laughs> this is such a money-making venture. If we can get this to work, we're going to make absolute bang. <laughs> oh, it's glorious. I know. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Okay, so we're going to need... Why can't I click on this? Excuse me? Game? Could I? Hello? Ah, I'm not in the build section. We're going to need some bigger fuel tanks, I think. So we're going to need a... Uh, converter? Where are converters? There it is. Brand adapter. <clears throat> and then we're going to need some Rockomax fuel tanks to get some serious freaking power on this baby. It might be less efficient to do it this way, but it feels like it should be more efficient, doesn't it? Imagine the carnage when it fails. That's not the kind of attitude we're really looking for here, Super Jailer. Super G. <laughs> Let's go with some of these. So these are like the, you know, just the secondary boosters. Have we got an engine big enough for these? I don't know that we do, actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that looks kind of stupid, doesn't it? All right, no, let's not do that. <laughs> we don't have an engine. Why would you give you give me fuel tanks before I actually had an engine big enough to run them? Cute. <laughs> yeah, I know. Titchy little engine. It must be cheaper though, right? Because you're saving on, on engines if you send them all up at once. I think it must be cheaper. Alright, uh, we need these in two sets. Okay, so like this. There we go. And the same again underneath. There we go. <clears throat> and we're going to need some nose cones on these babies. There we go. And I think Reliance give. I'm just going to try and see this. Yeah, Reliance have more thrust, but no gimbal. So yeah. I'm going to go with Reliance. Um, <laughs> look at this. The amount of money you'll make makes the cost somewhat a non-factor. Well, I mean, but if we're going for efficiency, then we want, you know, maximum bang for our buck. Where are our fuel lines? There they are. So these feed in to these. All right, now give me another set. Except for these ones. Oh. No, just. Can you control Z? 
Well, kind of. Okay, so give me another set of these. Oh, it's uh Is that a light? Is that symmetrical on those bottom ones? Yes, I think it is. Okay. Now, for these ones, second tier, we don't have those there. We instead have them going from here to here. Like that. We should put a Reliant on this. If you wanted efficiency, you'd watch on a Rumba stream. I like a Rumba streams. And we should put down here a... Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting size. Maybe we just won't bother with the inline reaction wheels. I think we'll be okay. Okay, so we've got fuel. Goes here to here. Here to here. Good. All the engines fire simultaneously. And then you jettison these. You jettison these first. So it should be this one. This one first. Then these ones. And then... What, what are all these? No, 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 no. Wait, yes. Yes, 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 yes. These, 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 but not these. These are a separate stage. Cool. Very min maxi, yeah. I like that sometimes. All right, we'll get these guys some stability adjusters. S sisters. Uh, we're missing winglets. I don't know if having the winglets this close into the center makes them work less well, but we shall we shall find out together. Let's try and put them at the same height. There. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> I think it's gonna wobble and fall over and just not work, but we'll give it a go. Looks like a tower in Dubai. Kind of does. I don't know if this is going to have enough thrust. I didn't put anyone on board either. That's, that's usually a bad sign. You could add more fins higher up. I thought fins are supposed to be as low down as possible. What was that? What did I say we were missing? Um, yes, passengers. <laughs> right. Get on the stupidly sized plane. I know it's not a plane. No, not Valentina. No, tourists. Okay. Everybody's on board. Save it up. Let's do this. <clears throat> and if this works, we can use this to just do a bunch of tourism missions every time they come up. And we need, whenever we need money. Three, two, one. Blast off. Oh, that is not that bad acceleration, actually. And it's not wobbling. The problem will be when we try and gravity turn, I suspect. And the acceleration is pretty bad. But we have a lot of fuel down here. <clears throat> yeah, I'm concerned. I'm concerned that we're not going to get nearly high enough. But we could just add like another layer of fuel and see if that makes a difference. Because, you know, you want to, yeah, our, if we try and gravity turn right now, this thing's going to start wobbling. And yeah, our acceleration increases, so yeah, that wobble is, uh, it's a concern. I won't tell you it's not. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, please, no. Right. Look at that. Look at it wobble. It's awful. Let's, but, I mean, we're getting pretty high now. We're getting there. So, I mean, it's... It just might work. I feel like this is something we could iterate on and have work. You all just want orbital. Actually, some of you just want suborbital. No, no, no. Yeah, you all want to orbit. Good. That would be a bad thing to get wrong. <clears throat> Let's try a bit more of a gravity turn. I think if we just gravity turned more gently, maybe we would have been able to do it. So, cut power. We might, I mean, we might still be able to do it. 
these final, these, these three, you know, remember there's three in the middle. So it's not like we have three stages of equal amounts of fuel. The final stage has more fuel. All right, let's get up to the atmosphere. Slow it right down. As soon as we leave the atmosphere, tiny bit of thrust, just to twist us over. In order to uh, bring us horizontal, parallel with the horizon. And this is a fuel, this is a waste of fuel. We could, uh, we could shut down two of the engines so there's less fuel wasted while during this turn. And now we're going to need to reactivate them. And hit it. Lose those. And now here is our final fuel amount. <clears throat> it's pretty good. I don't think we're going to make it. I need to aim up a bit. We're going to get to the apoapsis too quickly. We might be able to drag it back, though, with a bit of an aim up. Maybe. Ooh, maybe I didn't aim up enough. Yeah, we're slowing it down, certainly. But, I mean, it's so heavy. Yeah, and the lack of a good gravity turn makes it tricky. Hmm. It's, it's still just... Let's aim it up even more. Let's just, like, really... I think the problem is aiming up is good for putting, your, putting yourself closer to apoapsis. But once you're past apoapsis, I think you're pretty much done. But we've got, you know, we've still got half our fuel. So I feel like it still might be possible. Maybe aim, aim down a bit more. I really don't know, but... Oh, I don't know. We're getting there, though. <clears throat> Let's bring in those down a bit more. Oh, that's right. There's no gimbal on these engines. That's why it's so difficult. We should put one of the engines as the uh, uh, as the one with with the gimbal on it. I can't remember what it's called. We, we might just make it, you know, because periapsis gets exponentially it gets exponentially faster. The decrease, or well, I guess increase, since it's negative. But no, we're just not going to make it. I think. We might have been able to make it with better flying, because I totally balked the uh, the gravity turn with that wobble. But I mean, and 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 cut. No, it's see we're too far over. It's taking way too long. Yeah, see that took a long time. And we're exactly. Oh my god, we're exactly out of fuel. <laughs> Well, we got everyone to orbit, but we are out of fuel, so they're never coming home. <laughs> you can see my throttle. Yeah, so, reverse flight. Reverse vehicle assembly. I didn't put any anything to hold these on, did I? Any, uh, any of these bad boys. So let's stick a couple of these on. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. It seems to have... That's weird. Maybe we can put it below the fin. Because it wants to be as low as possible, ideally. There we go, that works. Okay, and another set. Here. Okay. Should hold them on and we'll do another bunch at the top as well, just to... So it hangs together a bit better. And that generally just means it's, it's going to push itself, you know, because if there's if it's wasting energy pushing sideways, then well, they wanted to go to space. Thing is, they wanted to come back. <laughs> I know, war demanding, right? <clears throat> what was the other thing? Yes, this is going to be a 
a swivel. So we have some gimbal in there. Fire at the same time as the others. Let's try this. Because we were closer. If we'd started, we'll just start burning about probably about a minute and a half before apoapsis. Yeah, that acceleration is, uh, it's pretty slow. <laughs> mm. But we're carrying a heavy payload. No offense, spaghetti. Oh, that wobble. <laughs> that wobble concerns me. That's the main problem with a rocket this tall. The wobble just throws you off. All right, but let's try an extremely gradual gravity turn. <clears throat> because I think maybe that will wobble a bit less. It looks like it's just wobbling more. The issue with the gravity turn is that I can only apply, as far as I know, like full yaw or pitch or roll. I can't apply like a tiny bit. The only way I can do that is tapping. And the tapping kind of throws it off because of the wobble. Oh, we forgot to dump those. That was a mistake. But we've, I mean, we, we, we're tilted. We're tilted pretty nicely. I mean, it might, it might work. We're getting up there. The gravity turns good. I won't say it's perfect. The wobble is still uh, very much a concern. <laughs> but the gravity turn is pretty good. We've got more fuel than we did last time, I think. I mean, we're getting our apapsis up there sooner. It's just some, a little bit more even of a turn. Yeah, because now, we're, you see, we're carrying... I don't know, it's burned. Okay, stop. We're carrying, you know, our second stage engines into the orbiting burn, or whatever it's called. All right, so now these two get shut down, and we go for our... No, 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 stop that yet. Stop that, not yet. Stabilize. Okay. And I want... Uh, how do I... Oh, God, no. Pin. There we go. Pin those. And we're going to want to reactivate them. This uh, this roll is potentially bad. Don't do that. I think there is some sort of golden rule based on atmospheric pressure that when you reach 45k, you begin tilting, not before. That's I, I thought that, but then I think he was saying, uh, Gandalf was saying yesterday, you actually want to tilt way earlier than I thought. Oh god, we only got 56 day passes. All right, all right, all right. Activate both engines. We need to uh, we need to get down to the horizon and start burning as soon as possible. In fact, go full on now, right now. Drop those. Unpin them. Let's go for the horizon. <clears throat> All right, come on. Here we go. See, we're burning much further ahead of apoapsis this time, but I burnt at a sh too sharp angle, I think. Just sort in a quill stream, you do believe Gandalf knows the game better. Yeah, but I mean, he, he's, he said he only played it a long time ago. Quite a while ago, anyway. And he said asparagus staging didn't help. And I think I just demonstrated that it helps a lot in that test. <laughs> Glad to see the photo of indeed into space. I don't know if we're Polish. I mean, I only know a few Polish people, but they mostly don't look like this. Trying to keep that apoapsis, keep us from going past that apoapsis, but we might be aiming too high because of it. Yeah, this <laughs> this wobble is the problem. <laughs> uh, we might. Yes, yeah, so we are past apoapsis now, but it, we went past apoapsis. A lot later than last time. Hmm. I'm not feeling confident though. 
Hmm. You should name the ship the Wooble Telescope. Telescope. <laughs> yeah, it could be good. Let's go down to Horizon. God, look at it. It's it's amazing. Obviously, you know, Kerbal doesn't simulate this very well. It would break apart. This wobble would just kind of rip things. The wobble telescope. Yeah, that could be good. <laughs> The problem with being past apoapsis is that once you achieve, you know, a relatively good orbit, it just keeps. It, it then suddenly becomes very difficult to push it to seventy. Yeah, we don't have enough fuel. <clears throat> we could probably do it in two trips. I take them up on the take some of them up on the first, and then take the other half up on the second. But it'd be so much more satisfying if we could do them all at once. Okay, and there, that's orbit. Let's just check they're all all ticked. Yeah, we might. I mean, it's it's plausible. It's remotely plausible. We'll align retrograde without using any fuel because we need to have enough fuel to get our perhaps it's low enough now. <clears throat> no, have ambition, all or nothing. <laughs> yeah, it does seem like what we're going to go with. You burn apoapsis to lower periapsis. Yeah, so let's warp to right here. We might be able to make it, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's going to be close. Hmm. And we'll find out definitively whether or not uh, whether or not these things align right when they're re-entering, because they're going to be re-entering for a while. <laughs> All right, now align to retrograde. Did you add heat shields and shoots? These these are all identical. I just copy pasted them, so they all have heat shields. Yeah, there it is. See, just that. I can't. There we go. Yeah, they all have a heat shield. Don't hit jettison. And they all have shoots. Look at it go mental on the uh, stability assist. Jerking up and down. It's quite funny. And we're just going to burn relatively gently when we're at the apoapsis to decay our orbit. Close enough. It's the right number, though. We might be able to make it. 40 is right. Okay, now. Uh, pivot. We're not going to run out of power, are we? No. Should be okay on that. Pivot and dump this thing. Is the plan now. Okay, thank you. Brave third stage. You served us well. Now align back to retrograde. <laughs> okay. And now it's a you know it's a long time before we get down here. So let's uh, let's walk forwards a bit. And we need to make sure that we don't hit each other as we're moving in. So what we're going to do is stay at this kind of angle. And then before we get... See, and then it... Yeah, it's aligning back in. But we're going to take over for a second. Turn off SAS. We're going to turn it sideways. And then separate. Good luck. Good luck, tourists. If this works, it's going to be good. <laughs> so let's check them all out. Turn SAS back on. You can see this one. This one should be fine, because he can align retrograde, and his SAS will align retrograde. This one, I mean, if I could self-destruct, I would. Uh, but these guys, see, at the moment, they're just tumbling. They're all just tumbling, and they are getting further away from each other. That's a good sign. Don't need the science here and now, right now. But 
I think, once they enter the th thicker air of the... Uh, is this a new gulag system? No, this is tourism. I think, once they enter the thicker air of the atmosphere... Let's, let's get there. It's 50k, I think. It looks so awesome. It does look freaking cool, doesn't it? The whole array of them all in a line. Especially against the... Uh, the Milky Way or whatever. I don't know if the, the kerbal's in the Milky Way. But once it hits 50k, okay, so we start getting some burn. Is it gonna align? Do they only burn when you have them selected? It's not aligning yet. It has to stay. See, this one's aligned fine. They're, they're, they have no, absolutely no problem. It's these guys that I'm concerned about. Reminds me of Warhammer 40k Space Marines. It's true, we've built drop pods. <laughs> I mean... They're wobbling quite a bit. I'm not going to say that they're not. Can we see the others? Can we zoom out? Yeah, look! That's so cool! <laughs> there he goes. You can't actually see his burning as much as if we actually switch to him. Because you don't get it when you zoom out, but... That's pretty cool. Are they aligning yet? They're kind of on target! Hey, Epic Goku, how you doing? Oh no, it's going sideways though! If we put... These lower down... Oh, that's a problem. If we put the drogues lower down, that might have worked better. This guy's fine. But he might be okay. I mean, they're decelerating. They're not in the thick air yet, though. They've got a lot of atmosphere to burn through. Look at all these little shooting stars we've created. Look at that line. That's so cool. <laughs> I love it. They are kind of aligning now. I think they might make it. Let's speed up time a bit, because this is going to take for freaking ever. I think, I think we've done it. Yeah, I think we might have done it. The air is about to get thicker. But, it's slowing down. <gasps> He's done it. Hey, Cody. I think we actually did it. What was the mission? We, did, we took three tourism contracts simultaneously. And so we had to ferry uh, 10 tourists to orbit and back. And we decided to do it simultaneously because I am a crazy dude. <laughs> This guy's already popped his parachute. So now it all comes down to whether or not they actually do correctly deploy the drogue parachutes. And whether two drogue parachutes is actually enough. But hopefully... Hopefully it should work like we tested. They should deploy it, I think, at exactly at 5,000. Can we still see the others? It's pretty dark. Once the parachutes pop, I reckon we'll be able to see the others. But yeah, that's pretty awesome. <clears throat> Five separate splashdowns we're having, right? I can hear the other parachutes. There they are. There they all are, all in a row. One, two, three, and four. That is so cool. <laughs> And yeah, two was enough. 5.3 is survivable on water impact. Survival on land impact as well, I think. That's, that's beautiful. As long as uh, everyone survived. <laughs> yeah, so here's the uh, first splashdown. It's going to be... Oh, he's already splashed. Once you splash down, you can't switch to him. Okay. But yeah, I think these guys are all going to be fine. It's going to take a while, because I deployed the parachutes too high again. 
<laughs> because I was nervous. But yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Mm. My bad <clears throat> for deploying the parachutes too early. But still, I think that was a resounding success. So, with the funds that we have earned from our tourism mission, we will uh, we will put them to work, getting us some science. And then with that glorious science, we shall go to the Mun. Can we see the Mun at the moment? Is it up here somewhere? I think it might be behind the planet, unfortunately. Where are the others? I can't seem to see them anymore. Oh no, there's one. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is obviously it's taking way too long. We can't, uh, unfortunately, can't go back to the tracking station right now. <clears throat> okay. Moon flyby. Yeah, that's the plan. We're going to fly by the moon with a whole bunch of sensors. Now we've got our maneuver nodes. It shouldn't be too hard to get to the moon. Oh, we can also do... Uh, yeah, we'll do this first, actually. We can do it on escape velocity from uh, Kerbin. You can do a bunch of sensors on the escape velocity. So that'll probably work. Get us a bunch of science. All you have to do to do that is uh, just burn powerfully enough that you're technically on a, on a trajectory which would take you out of Kerbin's orbit, just like very, very slightly, and then do all your research, and then just burn retrograde, get back into Kerbin's orbit, and it's all good. Well, <laughs> as it slowly descends here, I'm going to get what Russian r insists on calling a throat candy or whatever it is. <laughs> whatever it is he calls it. Get a throat sweet. I, I mean, if you went to space, you'd want the bit that lasted a long time to be the bit when you were in space. Because... Then you'd, you know, enjoy that bit more. So I imagine Rodney and Elsie here might be a bit peeved that the uh, the lengthy part of their mission was sitting throat sweet. No, see, I call it throat sweet. That's the correct thing. He calls it something strange. <laughs> I apologize for if I, my uh, noises of me eating my throat sweet come through the mic a bit. The it's the, it's this or or not streaming really. So hopefully you'll agree with me that this is the uh, the way to go. All of them are almost exactly the right height, same height. So we're gonna untime dilate when we get to like uh, fifty or something. Oh look, there they all are. <laughs> Wait, is that them? Why are there five? Why are there five? I thought we took four. No, it was five. All right, and untime dilate. It was five because we took uh, yeah ten or ten tourists two per pod. Well, this bit would be awesome. They'd be banging for sure. <laughs> Look at that gentle splashdown. No problem. Everyone alive? One, two, three, four, five. Hell yes. Recover vessel. And now we're going to recover the rest of them from the, uh, what you call it? The thing. <laughs> the recover of the thing from vessel. Okay, it's orbit and some stuff. And that, that. Money? Yeah, I can't remember now. <laughs> recover all of these guys. Everyone survived. Everyone made it back. All kinds of cash. And they were only up there for 20 minutes and 55 seconds. Awesome. Everyone okay. And let's just check. Jeremiah definitely made it back. Yes. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And of course our satellite's still out there. What the heck's this? Oh, this is uh, one of the missions we currently have. Wants us to put an orbit, put put a satellite in that orbit, and one wants us to put a satellite in that orbit. This one will be real difficult. Yeah. 
Look at that. $300,000 we made. And we haven't even covered these yet. A bit of cash out of those. Not much, though. But a little bit. Okay, new missions. Well, do we want to do new missions even? Science data from around Kerbin. Recover or transmit science data from science around Kerbin. Well, that's incredibly easy, so we'll take that. We're just looking for missions that fit into our uh, rendezvous two vessels in orbit of Kerbin. Oh god, that sounds difficult. Yeah, we're not doing that. Not anytime soon. <clears throat> and yeah, we could just keep doing these if we wanted. We could just make like infinite money doing these. So if we ever have money problems, we'll just revert to doing these tourism ones. Test a small landing gear on a suborbital trajectory over Kevin. That's really easy. We could stick a landing gear on the thing that we're taking out into uh, escape velocity. And that'll give us some... That'll help fund it, basically. So what we're looking for now is just, yeah, missions that help fund. Did it have a very specific speed? No. Yeah, so these two missions, they're going to give us 60... 75,000 ish. So we have 75,000 to spend without making a loss. And it's okay if we do make a bit of a loss on putting something in an escape trajectory. And that with a whole bunch of cluster of science attached to it. So, new spacecraft. This is I'm outer. Outer. I'm outer here. How do you, how do you say outer in terms of like a. I'm out of here. How would you spell that? Outer. Like that, I think. I'm out of here. This is the I'm out of here. We're gonna... It's gonna be a relatively big rocket. It not only needs to achieve orbit, it needs to achieve a huge apoapsis in order to actually just kind of... It'll be easier to explain when we're flying, but in order to kind of get the apoapsis all the way, all the way out. I know I'm explaining this very badly. What we could do would be take a scientist. Because if we could take a scientist, then we could reset this science junior. Oh, no, wait, you can't get out of these. Yeah, no, it won't work. We need a crew cabin that you can actually get out of. Because you can't... You can't disembark from this. It's just a passenger cabin. I think that's right. Mm, but we could... Actually, you could disembark from this. Because what you do... Let's just test it, and I'll, I'll show you what I think we can do. We'll take uh, Bob. We need a scientist. Sorry, Valentina and Bill. You can come on future ones, I'm sure. Let's just test this works. Oh, we don't have ladders. Yeah, no, we can't do this. Because we don't have any ladders. We need a ladder. What I was going to do was have... Uh, yeah, next, next, whatever. What I was going to do is have the guy in here switch to being in here, and then Bob would come up here, disembark from this hatch, walk down, and then he can reset this experiment. Some experiments like thermometers and stuff, you can just take data out of and it's no problem. But with others, you need to actually reset them. We need a science container thing experiment storage unit and it's going to look pretty weird I'll grant you it looks pretty weird but I think what you can do and we will test this in a second uh, let's just test it now actually save launch cool what I think you can do is run a science experiment transfer the data to this and then run it again without transmitting it. So observe. Okay, keep the experiment. Transfer the data to here. Removing will render it inoperable. That's fine. So you remove the data. And it stores it up here. Which means you can recover more data. Because it counts as recovered if you put it in here and then take it home. Yeah. Okay. Which means, actually, mm, yeah, it's even better than I thought. 
Uh, okay, so let's just revert this to vehicle assembly. It's actually better than I thought because we can put this below our heat shield because we don't need to bring this back because we'll take the data out and put it in here. So we can do this. <laughs> I, it's a weird re-entry. I'll grant you. I think, I think SAS will be able to do it though. And then we have a decoupler. Then we have a science junior and a service bay. And the service bay holds a whole bunch of power cells. Where are they? Electrical. Some rechargeable battery packs. Like this. You got work in the morning, so catch you next time. See you, Super. We also want a mech jeb. We can put the mech jeb down here, though, actually. We don't need the mech jeb on the final stage when we're actually re entering. Uh, uh, there it is. Mech jeb. Goes in here. And then. Oh, yeah. Maybe we take slightly less batteries. And let's take an inline reaction wheel instead. Yeah, that'll work. Should work anyway. And then we're going to put in here a bunch of... Science. So some bar barometer. A mystery goo containment unit. Might have to put all these over this side actually. Make it easier to look at them. There we go. Although this one needs resetting. And we're not bringing a scientist. So we should bring a couple of these. Okay. Put that slightly higher up so it's not clipping through the bottom. We can put it over here, actually. There we go. That works. Okay. So we've got a bunch of science. Now, fix that up. Under that, we have the fuel cells, fuel tanks, whatever. Okay, it's a relatively light payload, uh, so that's good. That'll make it easier. Then, and I don't know, I don't know how much thrust we need. I suspect it'll be a fair amount, but I don't know. So let's start. Let's start with. Let's let's give it a go. Let's see if we can make it work with uh, only two of these, rather than two sets of two each. And we want the reliance on these ones and nose cones and wings, please. Wings, wings, wings. Ultra Deluxe Winglets. There we go. Is that looking like an odd angle? No, it's fine. And winglets. There. It does look like an odd angle, doesn't it? <coughs> I think it'll be okay, though. And we are going to go with some struts connectors. There to there. That looks real. Oh, whoops. That looks really weird. Let's try that again. How about just here to here, like that? And then the same on the other side. These things are cheap as chips, so we can we can chuck a bunch of them on. And then one at the top. I kind of want it just like, yeah. <laughs> it was fine, it's fine. <laughs> and we're gonna want some good old asparagus staging, like so. Did I go from the right one to the right one? I can't remember. Make sure you go from the outside to the inside. Because these are one directional pumps. So we fire both engines, lose the outside engines, lose that pantry. Pantry? Parachute very entry. Let's give it a go. All right, Jeb. You ready? You're going to be the first Kerbal ever to be on an escape velocity from Kerbin. I forgot put any stability assist things on it, but it looks fine. So let's just try without them. 
Now remember, we can only use this once. So we do not want to, uh, to blow it early. We only want to use that when we're on the escape velocity. The other stuff that isn't material, that isn't mystery goo, we can do earlier. I don't think we're going to have enough thrust here. Especially since I think I was a bit late on that gravity turn. Remember, we don't want to force our way through the air. We just want to, want to keep it at about the same level of air resistance. Like about there. But yeah, no, this, this hasn't got enough uh, enough whammy, I don't think. Got a good gravity turn going, though. We might. It's going to be so light once we jettison these. We'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. All right, cut it there. Let it drift up. We'll just let it. Go up slowly. Speed it up a bit. Slow it right down. No, that's still fine. No new science to be done yet. <clears throat> and as we get into space, we'll slow it right down. And begin the tilt. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get to the atmosphere. Let alone escape. Sorry, I don't think we're going to be able to get to orbit. Let alone escape trajectory and back. So, I think we definitely need a third... Uh, a third stage. Okay. And burn at the horizon. Just above the horizon. Jettison those. See, now, with only one, I'm making some good headway. Mm. The other advantage of having another stage is we could not have these winglets on the stage that we're trying to put into orbit. Which I think would help. While we're doing this burn, let's check out some of these com completed all these contracts. Nice. All of those tourists. Glorious. Is that everything in the list? No world firsts for us? Don't think so. Close them up. I mean, we might get to orbit. But, yeah. Not enough thrust. Just not enough thrust to get into escape velocity. So let's just reset it now. And we'll go back and uh, have a go at throwing on an extra stage. Which makes these redundant. We're going to want basically a duplication of this stage. Uh, still with duos. And we're going to want to get these just nice and level. There we go. But, on these ones, the pipes, they are different. They go like this. Yes! Fire all the engines. Oh, so we don't need these extra extra wings. Okay, so fire all the engines, but which ones go first? Yeah, these ones. I want to jettison these ones first. There. Okay. That's, yes. Those, then those, then everything else. Okay. I think we're looking good. Let's try this. All right. SAS. Launch. Nope. Didn't put struts. Struts are good, because that wob that kind of little wobble of each of these Every time they kind of wobble from side to side, that's energy spent wobbling. We don't want them to spend energy wobbling. We want to spend them to spend energy pushing straight up, or once we begin the gravity turn, east. So we're going to put in some of these puppies right here. Beautiful. Okay, that's a lot better. Launch it. Okay. Good. Okay. It's very stable because it's got uh, four points of contact, so I don't think we need the supports. Okay. The acceleration is not much better, uh, but that's to be expected. 
the the big difference, and it is better for sure, but the uh, the big difference is that essentially these this extra set. This is what the power of asparagus staging is that this extra set of uh, boosters, well, they're not boosters, but you know, rockets that we've added mean that when the first set of fuel runs out, you're essentially already traveling at, let's see what it is, and I'll, I'll say it then. So essentially, you're already traveling at, you know, 4,000, sorry, 500 meters per second, and you're 10,000 up. And this is just the rocket we had last time. So essentially, you can put the rocket that you have higher up in the air with full fuel at the moment that you jettison them uh, for nothing, except money. <laughs> but it costs you no... Um, it costs you no fuel to get up there because you've jettisoned those ones. So you can put the same ship higher if you use this uh, asparagus staging where they all feed each other. So I think that's definitely a good idea. All right, let's cut it there. So we're going way higher than the last time, uh, which is nice. The higher we are, the easier it will be to, to get to orbit, I think. We'll wait till we hit space and hit space. Cool. Kerbin space music plays. And we're going to align down to the horizon. And I think we're going to burn a bit earlier than last time. We want to be between these two markers because we don't want to have to fight the current direction. And burn. And we're going to go still slightly above the horizon. But we should be burning like in exactly that direction. Yeah, such that these lines, so we're going slightly too low, so I think. Or if that's slightly too high, so slightly lower. We don't want, if you line them up like this, you don't want the lines to convert to... What's the opposite of converge? To diverge, diverge. We don't want the lines to diverge because that means we are wasting energy pushing sideways rather than just straight ahead. <clears throat> About to get rid of these. There they go. And yeah, see, now we got way more fuel. We had way, way more thrust for a long time. Because we had these things pushing us in this, uh, in this direction with all three engines firing for longer. Longer on the, the orbital burn, that is. And I still don't know what, uh, what, what the actual proper name of the orbital burn is. Like the, this, this burn that we're on right now, the one that puts you into orbit. I still don't know. Yeah, and we're not reaching apoapsis, so we can actually... Oh, God. We can go much closer to the horizon. Because I think how it works is the closer to the horizon you are, the more progress you actually make on the periapsis, but also the closer to the horizon you are, the faster you reach apoapsis. So if you're in danger of reaching apoapsis, then you want to dip up. And there we go. Orbit. Orbit with a mighty... Where is it? 327, sorry, 376 liquid fuel remaining. Great. Now what we want to do is warp to the highest point on our orbit. Warp here. And let's, uh, yeah, cancel that. Let's let's use a, a maneuver for the first time just to demonstrate. So what you do for a maneuver is you click on the point where you want to do your maneuver. And then these basically are different bur potential burns that you can do, right? You can do a retrograde burn. You can do, sorry, a retrograde burn, a petrograde burn. Uh, and I don't know what these are called. I think this is a normal burn and an anti-normal. I can't remember what these are called. But essentially they mean burn in that direction, 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 and burn in that direction. Hard to demonstrate, you know, 3D, but that in that direction. So what we're going to want to do is go to apoapsis and burn petrograde, essentially until this, rather than being a big circle, becomes... What would you call? I don't know what that shape would be called. Like that. But just. We don't want to overdo it. So, hoy three. What I've decided, Lester, is that I have little enough time and energy at the moment that I can handle one kind of really difficult thought through campaign at a time. So I'm going to do hoy four black ice and then go back to hoy three. Okay, so here's our maneuver. Let me just close it by clicking. And it puts the maneuver on the map. 
And then basically, if we go back to here, you can see that we now, you can't actually see it on the nav ball, that will, but there's a marker, which is this blue one, which is the maneuver marker. And basically, if you burn to, directly towards the maneuver for 38 seconds, oh, that's a long time. I don't know if we have 38 seconds worth of fuel times two left because we need the other bit to come back. Oh, temperature scan. We are high in space above Hervin. So we keep that experiment. Atmospheric pressure scan. Keep that. It's registering zero. It's almost as if we were in a vacuum. <laughs> we can open the doors on this thing because there's no, uh, no air resistance anymore. And now we can uh, transfer the data up here. And same with the thermometer transfer the data up here good and now we could do them again if you wanted to okay close that close that okay so now what we want to do is align to the maneuver node and we're going to burn on it once we hit and it'll tell us when we get to the maneuver we'll burn on the maneuver node which is this blue marker here for 38 seconds and that should put us on escape velocity out of Kerbin's orbit. Let's find out. So I think we can warp to maneuver. Mm, not sure. What we'll do is we'll just warp to just before it. No, we don't have maneuver. Warp here. It does, and the maneuver node, unlike the apoapsis and periapsis, doesn't move because it's predicting you'll be in the location of the maneuver. If you're, it's a 38 second burn, you want to divide 38 by two and you get, what was that? 19, <laughs> that took me far too long. And you want to burn 19 seconds before. So you're burning 19 seconds before and 19 seconds after the maneuver node, because this assumes you apply all of this thrust at the maneuver node, which obviously we're not actually gonna do. So. Align, so we're just trying to get a spot on that maneuver node. And when this guy levels up to level two, he can uh, automatically align to maneuver nodes for you, just like he can align petrograde and retrograde. So it's quite handy. Although actually, this maneuver should be a pure petrograde burn. So we could have him just align petrograde for us. And that should be close enough. Oh, it should be burning already. Never mind. It doesn't have to be incredibly exact. And this calculation is based off you burning exactly right. So you often want to keep an eye on it for yourself. All we need is for this apoapsis to become infinite. I think it registers as NA or I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it registers as. It's usually once it gets to about uh, 75 or something on, on Kerbin. It might be different on different bodies. I don't know. And there we go. We are now on escape velocity out of Kerbin. Ha ha ha. Fantastic. Let's, uh, let's EVA, shall we? We're still technically as, uh, in space high above, but in fact, we are now... I didn't build, bring the landing gear. Oh well. We are now on an escape velocity. So EVA. Hit me up with that EVA report. Head back in. And what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to let it go. Do we have enough fuel for this? We'll see. What I'm going to do, it's risky. I'm playing with Jeremiah's life here. We're going to go all the way over here until the game registers. Oh, we almost hit the mun. We're going to go all the way over here <clears throat> until the game registers us as having escaped from Kerbin. And then we're technically in orbit of the sun. And that lets you do a whole bunch of science. And then we'll try and come back. And I don't know if we've got the power. But we'll see. So here we are. You can see this is our uh, this is our new flight path. Once we reach it. And there we go. We are now orbiting the sun. Hell yeah. And there's Kevin. <laughs> Very cool. I'm out of here. We are indeed out of here. We have escaped from Kerbin. I can't even see it. Where is it? Must still be here somewhere. Anyway, that means we can crew report. Uh, we can temperature scan. Awesome. We can do an atmospheric pressure scan. We can do a mystery goo observation. 
which gives 20. The goo feels right at home, apparently. We can do a material study, which gives us 50 science upon recovery. Keep the experiment. And now we're going to want to transfer that data straight up here, which will render it inoperable. Close doors. We're going to want to take a look in this here service bay. And we're going to want to transfer data from here to here and then log the temperature again and keep it. And in fact, we could do this a couple of times. But we can't because it's already st storing the same one. So no, we can't do that. That's fine. Uh, we're going to want to observe this mystery goo. Keep it. Transfer data up here. Remove data. That's fine. Okay, have we transferred everything now? Did we already do the barometer up here? No, we didn't. Okay, good. Done that. Close that. Uh, okay. Done a crew report. Done the mystery crew observation. Okay. Now what we want to do, we're out of electric charge. That's an issue. Um, <laughs> we're going to want to turn on the engine a bit so we get some electric charge. And what we want to do now, where's my, uh, excuse me, I think I've just zoomed in way too much. There we go. Okay, so there's Kerbin. I think what we do is essentially burn in that direction. And that sh might, hopefully will make us fall back in towards Kerbin. Let's try, let's put a maneuver on and see what it thinks. If We, we should just retrograde burn, right? Oh. Did I see a, I think I'm seeing a very brief, no, retrograde burn looks like we're just going to go closer to the sun. Okay. Okay, forget that. See, this is where I... Tr I have done this before, but I'm I'm struggling to remember how I did it. <laughs> so we're going to put a mover here. Maybe it's... Uh, one of these? Ooh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay. See, that's what we're after. This Kerbin encounter is what we're after. And we want to do as small burns as possible to make it happen. So we're going to go from here at the maneuver. Just the tiniest little... Tiniest, tiniest little burn to give us a curve and encounter. Excuse me? There we go. Mm, it's still quite a big burn. It looked like we could go in either direction and get a curve and encounter. No? No, I'm just wrong. Okay. Now the maneuver. We're going to burn. And there's our curve and encounter. And if, if the curve and encounter is way over here, so be it. We're going we're gonna to try and make it as far away as possible in order to minimize the amount of fuel we need to use. That'll do. How long is this burn? See, it's a three second burn, this. <clears throat> in 15 minutes. So we're gonna warp over there. We've no power, which is why we can't use, I should have stuck some uh, certain panels on this thing. The tiniest bit of burn to align us and then cut power and let it spin. And then we're going to burn. Um, now. And cut it. And is that our covenant encounter? Is that our predicted covenant encounter? Delete the maneuver. That was a predicted covenant encounter. Burn. There it is. There it is. Hey, Zoom. How you doing, man? We're going to get home. We're going to bring you home, Jebediah. All right, so it's in a day. So we're going to warp. <laughs> That would be an interesting stream. Real-time Kerbin. Okay. Now. How long is the Kerbin encounter? Oh, it's huge. Okay, that's fine. So speed up. Okay, we are now high over Kerbin's water. Wait, what? Is that really the trajectory we're on? We're going to go straight down? I mean, that's brilliant, if true. <laughs> but that seems incredibly unlikely. Are we doing this? Or are we doing this? I, I don't understand. Look, if I speed up time... Are we really going to... No, okay, we're not, we're not, we're not. We're here. <sighs> I'm confused. I think what we do now is we align retrograde, which will take thrust, unfortunately. Because now we're over Kerbin, we just align retrograde. And yeah, our periapsis is... Uh... Cut, cut. 
No, it wouldn't let me cut the engine. And now, apparently, that's all it takes. We're going home. But don't overdo it. Okay. What we want to do... <sighs> okay, we have a problem. Which is that we're going too fast. Hmm. <laughs> That's way too random. I randomly clicked on the first part of Kill Space Track on YouTube and thought that I could watch it live, but what are the odds? <laughs> that is pretty cool. <laughs> Problem with this is we're coming in. Once we get there, the speed is going to start rapidly increasing. And I'm not sure what we can do about that. <laughs> Where's Kevin? There it is. Because if I burn... If I burn more retrograde... I'm just burning towards Kerbin. I think what I want to do is align Petrograde. No, 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 no. No, this is wrong. Stop. Cut it. Ah, God, that's a bad mistake. What I want to do, we've got so little fuel that we really can't afford mistakes right now. We're going to align Retrograde. Yes. And burn retrograde. Yeah, to lower it, make the orbit smaller. Is that is that right? I don't think that's right. I think you're gonna die, Jebediah. Alright, let's align. What I wanna do is make the apoapsis 40k and let, then just ride it out. And let's see. I think we need to burn like here. Okay, 60k. 60k is pretty good. Oh god, we've got a mun encounter. <laughs> Wait, that might be good. The mun encounter is going to raise our periapsis. By a lot. I don't think we want that. No, wait, this is good. Okay, okay, this is good. So we're going to come in. We're going to go into the atmosphere. But then we're going to escape again. Because we're only going down to 60. And the atmosphere is so thin at 60 that we should escape again. I think. Let's see. I'm hoping we don't suddenly burn up at this point. What was the perhaps a 60? That's pretty low, dude. <laughs> I don't know. It will slow us down a bit. Because there is currently friction applying to this right now. As you can see. The very slight red glow there. Wait, is that red glow really overheating? How hot are you? No. I think that was just a graphical error. Error. Because we're going up again now. So yeah, we're tumbling through the atmosphere. I'm not sure... I don't think that's overheating. Because there's no, like, roar or anything. But it looks like it's overheating. What's the goal of the mission? We were, get onto an escape, get into orbit of the sun, recover a bunch of science, get home. That was the mission. We're very low on fuel. Okay, so now what we want to do is we now want to go out to our apoapsis. Wait, let's, let's just watch the money encounter first. Hang on, wait, we're having a money encounter. We can do a whole bunch more science. <laughs> Fantastic. We're pretty early on, Zoom. We haven't... We've never had a MUN fly by before. So, we're about to do some mad science over the MUN. Here it comes. Okay, there we go. MUN encounter. Crew report. Excuse me, crew report. Overwrite the existing crew report. No, transfer the crew report. Uh, review stored data. How do I move the crew report into this? Uh, I, I thought I'd be able to... Tra well, it's actually full transmit data, although I don't think we have any comms devices on this thing. No. Review report. Ah, oh, that's, that's how we can do it. We can click on this, and then collect all. Yes, so that collected the crew report. And now, we can do a new crew report. Nice. 
keep that. Uh, now we can open up the service bay. Hit me up with one of those mystery goos, please. And one of those, excuse me, one of those temperature scans. Nice. Why isn't it automatically flagging that we can do a thermometer scan? Ah, because the data's still here. Okay. You, collect all. Ah, because the thermometer scan is a duplicate. Right. This temperature scan, just reset. Mystery goo. Yeah, keep that. Keep that. Whatever. Do the temperature scan. Keep the experiment. Collect all the data. Okay, so this should have no data. Yes. And this should have no data. Yes. Okay. Close it up. EVA. EVA report. Get back in. Excellent. And now we can wait for Mun Escape, <clears throat> which is going to raise our periapsis by a bunch. But that's quite all right. And we go out here to our apoapsis, and we burn for the tiniest of moments. Let's warp out to the apoapsis. Just so I don't overshoot mostly. Okay, and now we align yes please retrograde i'm gonna need to use some fuel to push us over to to retrograde but that's fine bit of you can you can just do a tiny push with the reliant sorry the swivel it's got the gap that gimbal and then let yourself drift over to it much more fuel efficient so we're going to go over to the retrograde and then we're going to burn on it and we're going to lower Turn the CS back on. Go to Petrograde. We're going to run out of electric charge again very, very soon. And we're going to burn just the tiniest of bits. We want this to be 40k. Cut! Cut! Why doesn't it... Ah. I'm very frustrated that for some reason it doesn't seem to cut when I tell it to sometimes. Jeb's having a blast. I know, the little guy. <laughs> Let it spin around, and then we'll just do the tiniest bit of <clears throat> tiniest bit of boosts. There we go. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And now, whew, the risky part. We dump that lot. We have no electric charge. Oh, that's so bad. Because that means we won't be able to align retrograde. Well, hopefully, wind resistance will do it for us. But we can but hope. So we've dumped that uh, I'm out of here, which is now classifying itself as a satellite. <laughs> but it's a satellite which will crash into Kerbin. Okay, so uh, we're here. And now we just hope that we're on a good enough entry trajectory to not burn up. And I sincerely hope that is the case. If we do it again, I'll bring very slightly more fuel and solar panels. Solar panels would make it a lot easier and they would make it more fuel efficient. But I'm hoping Jeb's the man with the skills to bring this home. All right, we're in the atmosphere. Now, come on, come on. Face the right way and get held there. A bit of a wobble is fine, but we really don't want this to blow up. Because if this blows up, we lose the parachute and Jeb here needs his parachute. It's a big wobble, but it's look it's it's the right kind of wobble. I mean we're facing the right thing down at least. We are losing a blater. That's like the the resource that keeps the uh, heat shield running. But we're losing speed, we're losing height. It's looking pretty good right now. I think. I think we may have done it. I think we may have done it. We managed to get a Mun encounter and a Sun encounter on the same mission to gather up all that juicy science into this here experiment storage unit. That's fantastic. 
Mm. That's pretty freaking fantastic. We may hit a mountain. An EVA portal? Let's get out. No. No. Don't get out. This thing. Yeah, 1,000 is fine. I think we'll be okay even if we hit a mountain. I think. I don't know. We'll just slide down the side. But I don't know if we are going to. We might be able to check on the map. So it looks... I mean, on the map, it looks like we're going to miss the mountains, but... I don't know how accurate the main map is. And we are going to remember to deploy the parachute. That would be the absolute worst way to finish this mission. Where's the other part of this of this ship, by the way? Where's our engine? It's where it kind of flies out of nowhere and slams into us, isn't it? Okay, pop the parachute. <clears throat> parachute won't actually extend until we're 1,000 down. Well, sorry, 1,000 meters up, but that's fine. And... Parachute pops right about now. And Jeb here comes to a lovely gentle under 9 meters per second and floats down victorious. That's fantastic. I did not think we'd pull this off second try. And that is a lot of science we've just recovered. Let's slow down. Time dilation sometimes mucks up with landings and stuff. Oh, fantastic. Good work, Jeb. Let me recover vessel. Let's check out how much science that was. Let's see. I'm hoping... Oh, I was going to say 150 plus. 280 science. Beautiful. Recovery of a vessel orbiting around the sun. Nice. That's an extra 32 that I wasn't expecting. Do we also get recovery of a vessel... In orbit around the moon. Oh, actually, it wasn't in orbit around the moon, was it? No, it doesn't look like we do. But yeah, loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of science there. Excellent. And a whole bunch of cash. Wow, that was a lot of cash. Where did that come from? I think it came from uh, milestones. Yeah. Okay, we have recently accomplishments. Awesome. So we escaped the gravitational influence of Kerbin. Nice. We've initiated the first flyby of the sun. Awesome. We have entered the orbit of the sun. Yeah, that seems like the same thing. Oh no, it doesn't, because you could have uh, you could be flyby when orbiting, yeah. We have escaped the gravitational influence of the sun. Hell yeah. Initiated the first flyby of the moon, escaped the, the gravitational influence of the moon. Returned home from a flyby of the moon and returned home from a flyby of the sun. And returned home from an orbit of the sun. And the first data from the sun and moon. Awesome. Let's, uh, can I yeah, trash those? And we completed that contract. That was a while ago. Yeah, let's just trash all of these. Awesome. Oops, I clicked on the uh, vehicle assembly building. Okay. Fantastic. Good work, Jeb. Okay. What should we do next? We should spend that science, really. Advanced construction. The Airstream shell is nice, as is the radial decoupler. It's very useful. I do want to land on the MUN. So we will need these landing struts. I do not understand the launch escape system. Solid rocket tower is designed to wrench the command pod up and away from a malfunctioning rocket. Us, I mean, like, we're cheaters. I'd reset. <laughs> so I don't think we need those. Propulsion systems gives you a tiny little fuel container and a tiny little engine, basically for managing uh, satellites in a very fine-tuned way. This gives us the skipper. This is the one you can actually use with the Rocco Max fuel, uh, fuel containers. These ones. No these ones so we probably need that it also gives you the kickback solid fuel booster which basically puts you on almost on an escape trajectory by itself so we're gonna get that heavy rocketry the mainsail and the twin bore is, is just so powerful now uh, I would like 
This is basically, oh yes, this is it, the lander can. This is what, how, the good way of having basically just two people on a mission. Because it fits one. So basically you have a scientist in here, and then you put it just directly under the, uh, the command module. RCS thrusters are good. They are nice. Ladders are imperative if you want to land on the moon. Put down some flags. I think we want... We can get two more. We need landing. It's just an, it's imperative. In the meantime of getting to the moon... We could always have one mission that landed on the moon and then left. And one that... Uh, you know, stuck around. I think the Aerostream and the big radial decouplers are really valuable for landing on the moon. You can use the radial decouplers to build a much more stable lander than you can get without them. So the next thing we need is... I'm not fussed about this, really. Hmm. The next thing we need is probably... Space exploration, advanced rocket, con advanced flight control, and the way we're going to get the science to do those is we're going to land on the Mun. We can also orbit the Mun for a whole bunch of science. Maybe we should orbit the Mun first. Hmm. Explore the Mun. We'd like you to orbit the Mun and stay there in a nice, stable orbit. It isn't personal; it's science. Okay, so we get fifty-one thousand for that. <clears throat> so we got loads of money to do our, our orbit. I think we should orbit first. Orbit, do some science, come back. Test the small heat shield while splash down. That's so trivial that we should just throw it on anyway. All freaking tourists. Specific orbit, tourists. Orbit curve in. The skipper. See, this is interesting. Because the skipper is the better Rocco Max engine, which we can't technically currently use because it's the next tier up. So if we used it now, excuse me, if we used it now, oh, it gives us a bunch of money though. Let's do it. Let's take a skipper up. Take the skipper up, do the test, and then go to the moon with the skipper. But the skipper's pretty heavy to take to the moon. Hmm. Let's take it maybe as something we do next. As a, as a money-making venture. Okay. This is not what's going to take us to the moon. This, however, might be a good base to build on. Uh, yeah... Thing is, we're only going to be in one situation, new situation, right, orbiting the moon. So I don't think we need this. Although we might get the kind of orbiting over the moon's lowlands, orbiting over the moon's all the different, you know, the poles, orbiting over all the different parts of the moon. So I think we do still bring this in case we need to transfer lots of data up. Okay, now what were the other things we were missing? Well, we should keep a uh, decoupler. We were missing an aero stream. Actually, I don't want to put build it yet, though. Because under here, we're going to put some solar panels. Yeah, and that was the other problem we had. Yeah, let's bring this back. Bringing the... Bringing this back is a pain, but we can bring back a service bay without too much problem. Too much of a problem, excuse me. And we'll throw on that titchy little heat shield because we've got the uh, test it splash down mission good and then under that you have this if it lets me put it slightly further up i'm going to i think oh that looks real weird let's not do that we could put this mm, yeah maybe that's a better idea okay open this up and if we pull out the batteries we could stick we could stick this in here that looks a lot better and it makes it much more bottom heavy. And then in terms of batteries, let's delete this, we'll, we'll remake this. In terms of batteries, uh, we need, we should make this a new, uh, don't save these changes. 
this. This is round the mun. And we're going to stick a parachute. And we're going to stick a service bay. Which we're going to pop open. And in there, we're going to want our experiment storage unit. Which actually looks like it's partly inside this control unit. But that's fine. Uh, nice trick I found with batteries. You can put these, a huge number of these, like this. And it just works. <laughs> and you can put other stuff below it, and that's fine. But there we go. whole bunch of batteries in there. Science. We will need one thermometer. Oh, it's not one. One thermometer. One barometer. But then a bunch of these. Right. Is that right? Yes, because these need resetting. And we don't have anyone to reset. Or did I... No, I haven't got the can yet. Correct? Where would the can be? Yeah, we haven't got the can yet to store the extra guys. So, we want just a bunch of these. I think it's valuable. Good. Uh, we'd, we'd rather it was a bit symmetrical. <laughs> so let's put this over here. So four of those. So we can take... Mystery crew observations from four different scenarios. That seems good. These are a bit a bit off. Potatoes and magnets. Interesting. We just want to make these symmetrical as much as possible to keep the weight nice and balanced. Okay, is there everything we want in there? Anything else we could pop in? Ah, right, yeah, of course. Make Jeb. Make Jeb can go right there. Beautiful. Close up the service bay. Under that, we're going to want a standard stack decoupler. Look at that. Nice, compact, relatively light. 1.3 tons. Pretty freaking heavy. But still, relatively light for Kerbal. And we're going to want a fuel tank. And basically, this this bit is like the, the comeback from the moon part. And it takes a very surprisingly tiny amount of energy to actually get back from the moon. Because the moon's so light. So small. We're going to want to swivel on there. Do we want another engine on this? Another fuel tank? I think... Let's play it safe. They don't cost that much. They are heavy. That is what's going to bring us back from the moon. Now we need something to put this in orbit. And send it to the moon. So, we're going to have... We're going to go full on Rocco Max, I think. Rocco Max is pretty good. No, decoupler first, obviously. Decoupler, Rocco Max converter. It's, it's gonna be pretty tall. We could. <sighs> Let's try it with one less of these because it's gonna be so tall otherwise. You know what? That's a good compromise. We'll stick a smaller fuel tank on. Yeah. Looking good. Okay. And now on here, we're going to put some serious Rocco Max fuel tanks. Maybe two. And then on that, we're going to whack our... Is this... Did we take the skipper test? Yeah, test the skipper fuel engine. Did I not get the other Rocco Max fuel engine? Okay, so we better make it there and back using this tested skipper then. Because <laughs> we need to research it. Is that right? Let's just save and check. I think, I think that is right. Let's check. No, we research heavy rocketry. We do, we do own the skipper. Okay, okay, that's fine. Back to vehicle assembly. Okay, and then on the side of this, it's a weird looking rocket, isn't it? On the side of this, we're going to put some of these radial decouplers. With some more big ass fuel tanks. And, mm, do we have the aerodynamics to go on top of these? Yes, we do. These things, good. And some, maybe just another one on there. And then under there goes some more skippers. And we get some serious thrust coming out of this thing. Now, do we need another two? We may. Let's put some winglets on. Get a little bit of uh, aerodynamic control. 
and we want to do that. And I think that is going to be easily enough thrust to send this little payload to the moon and back. It might be too much. But they're going to give us 70k just for putting one of these in orbit, so it seems fine to me. Now we are going to want to do some beautiful asparagus staging here to here and here to here. Sorted. Now some struts on the top and bottom of each of these to keep it all nice and stable. And there. And stick that there to there. Beautiful. Hold it up. That's not beautiful. It's horrendous. There to there. Fantastic. Am I missing anything? Yes. We're missing. Oh, yeah. I never put a, uh, a Aerostream thing on it. I think it might be okay without it. Did I put a heat shield under here? No. That's a problem. <laughs> We're definitely going to want. Uh, yes. Okay, the batteries might be an issue. <laughs> um, like I told you, you know, it just works. Let's put the batteries on the top, maybe. Will that work? But like I said, we want crazy radial symmetry on these babies. <laughs> it's perfect. It's a colourful... It's a colourful battery ensemble. I'd like them just slightly further in is the thing. Ooh. There we go. Okay. Looking good. Close that up. Whack a heat shield on the bottom. Whack a small heat shield on the bottom. Put this thing back on. Sorted. Okay. I think this is too much thrust. But let's try it. Uh, we need some of these launch stability assistors, please. We'll take four, please. Two there. And two here and here. That should hold it relatively stable. We'll fire all of these, all of these at the same time. Now, we're going to get rid of these first. So these ones first. Those right ones, yes. So we're going to launch everything off. We're going to get rid of this, these ones. Then we're going to get rid of these ones. Then we're going to dump this whole bottom bit. Fire the next, last stage. Dump this whole thing. Fire the parachute. Round the month. Launch pad can't support vessels heavier than 140 tons. That's a shame. I think it's time to upgrade our launch pad. Do you have enough money? I hope we do. We do! Unlimited max vessel size. Sweet. I'm not surprised. It's a freaking heavy rocket that we're planning on sending up. We're starting, you know, this is the... <laughs> we're already starting, you know, practically there. We're so high up. <laughs> we could just, uh, just lower that down. Make that look a little bit less silly. There we go. Alright, it's a thing of beauty. Launch it. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. I'm just going to think it through. Uh, we've got flaps, all the engines, all the science. I think we're good to go. All right, tab at it. RCS on. Yeah, see, he's upgraded. He's uh, he's level two now. Oh no, he can't do. Uh, Oh, so here are the other names. Okay, so it's uh, Petrograde, Retrograde, Normal, Anti-Normal, Radial Out, Radial In. Okay, and then at, his, at level 3, he can do maneuvers, I guess. Okay, blast off. That acceleration is not bad, considering just how heavy this thing is. I know, I forgot. Cut the engines. You don't deserve to go to the moon. You don't deserve to go any higher. We didn't put a Science Junior on this thing. I'd like a Science Junior... Uh, that we recover, I think. Okay, and just, uh, just revert that to the assembly. There we go. So, we're going to put a science junior. Do we want to put the science junior above or below the heat shield? I think we want to put it below the heat shield. I think we're going to put it here. 
Yes. Okay. And that will let us get one round of science, junior science. From around the moon. Because we didn't get it, remember, when we went on our previous one. Because we'd already used up our science, junior on the sun. Once we can start bringing scientists with those, uh, those cans, it'll be much easier. Okay. Let's do this thing. So what does the stage, do you think, do? I don't understand it. It just shows you the fuel for the current stage, I guess. Let's see. Yes, looks like it. Okay, that's helpful. Okay. We're not going to gravity turn until we drop the first fuel canister. And uh, that's because I think if we turn too much, it might fall into us, hit us, and blow up. And we do not want to blow up. Ideally. We're also, even with the... Uh, the slightly shorter second final stage fuel tank. We're quite a tall rocket. So we don't want to uh, don't want to wobble too much unnecessarily. We're gonna stay under Yeah, we're gonna begin to start bringing the throttle down a touch. No, I think we can still go a bit a bit harder. Just really don't want to push through the atmosphere. Drop those. Okay, tilt. Tilt like you mean it. We really don't want to force our way through the atmosphere, but with the amount of thrust we have, we don't have the fuel to really punch through the atmosphere in the kind of too fast way that we do sometimes. Not with the fuel that we have, sorry, with, with the thrust that we currently have. Let's get that tilt. We want to get it down to this third line, I believe. We want 10, 20, 30 degrees. 30 degrees has been recommended to me by those cleverer than I, so we'll go with that. Pretty strong gravity turn. It's got a very nice gimbal on these strong uh, skipper fuel engines, so... I realize... Cut it. I realize that I've said gimbal a number of times and not explained what I mean by that. Uh, that's this... Uh, watch the engines closely. You see how they move like that? That's what I mean by gimbal. The ability of them to go around like that. I don't know why that's called gimbal. If anyone knows, do let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to hear. But, yeah, so that's a gimbal engine, one that can move around like that. And the... The gimbal amount, which I think is, uh, I don't think it's shown here, but it's shown in their information on the uh, uh, on the actual construction page, tells you how many degrees off, like straight, they can actually rotate. Obviously, the more they can rotate, the greater degree of which you know directional control they grant. We didn't put any uh, what do you call them? Uh, Incline, inline wheels or something? I can't remember what they're called. Uh, those, the, the spinning wheels that help help you move around a bit. We probably should have done. Uh, we'll remember to bring some of those next time. All right, cut it there. We're actually we're gonna have to burn for more than a minute, I suspect. So let's burn right now. So it's 50 seconds till apoapsis. Okay, I think it's quite a cool looking ship. This one. I do like just the... Ah, okay, so that's a mistake we made that we should correct if we have to try again. You see how these are angling in? Yeah, that's not good. Uh, we should have a wire connecting here and here and here and here to stop them doing that because currently they're wasting energy fighting against each other. Dump them. Now they're not wasting any energy. And we've used a lot of fuel to get to this position. But the thing is, we've now put ourselves in this position. You know, previously we'll have brought up like this much fuel to being at 40,000 uh, kilometer periapsis and, uh, you know, full fuel on the second last stage. But we've got tons. What the hell? You didn't get a notification. How long have you been streaming for already? It's been an two hours, actually, Gandalf. I'm sorry you didn't get a notification. We're, uh... Do you want me to catch you up? Or does that count as spoilers? I don't know. You might want to watch the, uh, the VOD. Do, do, do. Okay, along we go. <clears throat> sure, catch me up. Okay, we did our previous mission successfully. We took all the tourists up. Did we take the tourists up on the previous one? No, that was on this session. That was on this stream. We took the tourists, and it worked. It was wobbly, but it was it worked. It was cool as hell. You should watch that on the VOD. Not to toot my own horn, but it was, it was awesome. You should watch that. Uh, and then we... Did a okay, cut it there. We did a 
Kerbin escape path. We went into orbit of the sun, did a bunch of science in the orbit of the sun. We came back. On the way back, we happened to hit the moon and got a mun encounter, did a bunch more science and then came home. And now we're going to go and try and orbit the mun. Was that the one where the stages separated with the separate sheets? Yes, it was awesome. We had five five passenger things all floating down in a line and you could sit in one and see all the other the other four like lined up with their parachutes it was so cool it's like sincerely go and watch that one once the vod's up i mean once the vod's up on youtube because we all know that the twitch vods are you know trash so let's let's go to the mun oh god we left <laughs> i thought this was i thought this thing was gonna have a decaying orbit <laughs> what <laughs> Let's go have a look. No, if I switch to, I can't revert, I think. I thought we left... <laughs> this is the engine part of the uh, the one that we took onto a Kerbin Escape and then brought back again. <laughs> we dumped it, but I didn't realize we left it there. <laughs> All right, we might have to uh, self-destruct that from the, from the station. Okay, so we're going to the Mun. So the way you get to the Mun is you, you start about here. When the Mun's there, you start about here. And you go and you send yourself over there. And then by the time the man gets there, you hit it. And let's do it with a maneuver node. So about here. There's the man. So like, yeah, about here. Maneuver there. You're going to burn Petrograde's. And hit the man. And hit the man. Yes. Okay. Okay, so there we go. We want to use as little fuel as possible to hit the man. Oh, and we got maneuver nodes if you weren't there for that. So, yeah. Hitting them on. Good. So, can you align? No, so he can't align to Maneuver Node yet. That's fine. Oh, I didn't put any freaking solar panels on it. <laughs> That's annoying. I meant to put solar panels on it. We've got a bunch of batteries, though. So we might be okay. All right, well, let's... Let's align over to that Maneuver Node. Do you Yes. No. No, we haven't invented us yet. We have got about three. We got three hundred and eighty science out of our. Is it three hundred and eighty? No, two hundred and eighty science out of our trip to the sun and the mun. Uh, we didn't orbit the mun. We only had an encounter. Hence this. And uh, that was only enough to get <clears throat> big, big engines. And what was the other one? It's super, super useful for fine-tuning encounters. Yeah, I bet it is. I, I've used it for that before, but not very well so i look forward to oh sorry spurty assist not full throttle <laughs> didn't mean to do that okay now warp to the maneuver please how do you warp to maneuver can you can you is one of these warp to maneuver is that warp to maneuver i'm gonna i'm just wait for the answer i walked around here while we wait because I thought there was a way to warp directly to a maneuver. All the way around Kerbin, you can just do a single burn to get an encounter with Duna. If you have RCS, you can then find it within a single kilometer. Just click it to find out. Well, I don't want to ruin it. I don't know what this... It might... No. It did something. I don't know what it did. Well, we deleted it now. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's 45 degrees behind the moon. I think you start the burn. So, like, here would be ideal. Let me burn over here. There it is. Yeah. And that looks like a nice trajectory to get a... Uh, a mun orbit. And we're trying to burn as little as possible, which is why I'm pulling back on the, on the retrograde here. Okay. In four minutes, we're going to burn for 37 seconds. We've got lots of fuel left in this thing. Remember, you can drag the movement around the orbit path. That's a good point. So we can check where exactly we'd want it. Okay. Well, I think we want... What's going on? Why is that number changing as I, I click and drag it? I'm not, I'm not quite following. We're not going into the atmosphere, are we? No. I don't understand. Hmm. Anyway, we want it about we want the longest encounter possible, I think. So like 
Yeah, there looks pretty good to me. Okay, three minutes. Let's go over there. Hey, Lama, how you doing? Hold it by the gray circle. Wasn't I holding it by the gray circle? Yes, we're running MechJev, which adds a whole bunch of automation we're not using, and f relevant to us, adds in this orbit info box, which I love. Hold it by the gray circle. That's what I'm doing. I think it's just moving very slightly around as I'm holding it. Oh God, that moved out where I wanted it. We're also using Science Alert, which tells you the science that's available where you currently are, and you can just click on it to do it which is very convenient. All right, so two minutes. We're gonna to wanna to burn when there is 20 seconds left. There we go, let's get back onto the mover. I really should have brought some, uh, whatever you call them, the, uh, what do you call them? When you're holding it by the circle, it's just an old message. Oh, I see. Um, What are the inline wheel things called? <laughs> really clicking through the different situations right now for science now. All right, all right. Let's get this, get this right. Don't overshoot. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. We're going to get our mining counter. Kill that maneuver node. Let's warp over to our mining counter. Okay. Hello, man. Let's do this thing. So, go over into... Uh, actually warp until we're actually technically in its influence. It shouldn't take very long. There we go. Now, I think we wait until we're at the periapsis. And then burn retrograde. Did you land on Minmus yet? No. We uh, we haven't even orbited the Mun yet. This is the first first Mun orbit. I think what you do is you add a maneuver here and you burn retrograde until you orbit the Mun. I think that's how you achieve Mun orbit. Or could I just burn here and would it take less long? That looks like it's taking a lot more burn and we're going to hit the Mun. Yeah, I think we burn at Petrograde. Minmus is easier than Mun. Is it? Which is Minmus? No, Minmus is at a different angle. It's much higher. But it's small. It's lighter, right? I mean, it's not lighter. It's, it's uh, has less mass, so it's easier to escape. All right, I think we burn retrograde here. There we go. As minimum possible to get into an actual orbit. No maneuver. No maneuver at periapsis. Remember about the rule: burning when you're lowest uses less energy. Yes, good. So we burn here. It's much easier, believe you. Why do I not believe you when you use that voice? All right, we're in space high over the Mons Midlands. Let's get our material study done. And let's get one. We might as well open up this service bay. Might as well get one of our mystery goos done. <clears throat> and we'll hold that. Only getting four. We've got lots and lots of fuel left. Because uh, we haven't even got into a final stage yet. So I think... I'm going to try and get in orbit low over the Mun in order to uh, in order to be able to get lots of different uh, situations so we can do a whole bunch of science. It's, uh, you know, potentially disastrous, of course. Mimus gravity is super low, so landing is easier. Also, it doesn't matter it's further away because you need very little delta V. I know it's not it, yeah, it's not the distance that concerns me. It's being able to get onto the right... Uh, I can't remember what you call the difference between this and this. You feel gay watching this. You say weird things, Lester. All right, so we're going to wait until we're at the encounter. And yeah, the fact that we have no... Uh, I feel like I should close this just because it's, it's messy. <laughs> We also don't have the cans, which means I can stick a scientist in here to go and reset that, unfortunately. Inclination. Thank you. Yes. Oh, it's a 20... It's a 55-second burn. Blimey. That's quite... That's quite the burn there. We might run out of this whole fuel tank on that time. In that time, excuse me. So we're gonna roll all the way over here. And... Three, two, one... 
burn. Oh, I can have him hold retrograde as well. Good. No, it's not a 35 second burn. What are you talking about, game? All right, cut. Are we are we doing it? Are we doing it? We've done it. We're orbiting the man. Hell yes. Lester, don't be weird. Set up a maneuver to sync the inclinations up. We only have to drag by the triangle. Yeah, it's still harder. <laughs> I agree, it's not much harder. All right, let's... Uh, <laughs> still is annoyed that I left that probe there. All right, so what counts as low orbit? Let's find out. Let's go to apoapsis. We'll add a maneuver. We actually don't need a maneuver. We'll go to apoapsis. Oh, yeah. And we'll just lower our orbit very slightly. And we'll just kind of do a flyby like that. And every time we go past it, we can do a bit of science. Burn more to circularize when you're at periapsis. Or not. Why? Why do we want to circularize? Because I just want to... Well, I guess circularizing would let us hit both sides on our on our little science trip. I was thinking we could just do this and then make a couple of runs. No, no, we're not landing. I may be an idiot, but this is not what a lander looks like. <laughs> I know, stop for... Uh, turn off SES. Don't use my fuel when I don't need to do. I think we're just going to go apoapsis, lower it, and then do a bunch of runs. And the fact that the moon's rotation... I don't want to waste... Nah, yeah, no. We should just circularize. But we might as well circularize with the lowest periapsis that we want, I think. I'm no expert, though. All right, let's put a tiny bit of burn in here to allow him to pull us back to retrograde easier. And we're just going to bring the periapsis pretty low. You can just keep the bit elliptical orbit. Yeah, I thought so. But we want, to, we want to get a bunch of different encounters. I don't know what counts as low orbit. So I'm going to put myself pretty close. <clears throat> okay. Let's go check if that's low orbit. I think that should be low orbit, really. We have way too much fuel here. Warp. Be careful, the map is pretty little leading. Make sure your paper has a noticeable difference above the ground. It's easy to go too low. If you hit a tall mountain... Okay, that's worrying. Uh, let's just check. It's not going to be a 100,000 meter high mountain, though. Sorry, 100,000... 100, yeah, 100,000 kilometer mountain. That would be quite the uh, quite the thing. All right, are we in low orbit? In space, high over Munzee's crater. Yes, okay, so this counts. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We've got so much fuel. Let's do the circularizing burn that Lambert suggests. You're not an expert. I would never have guessed. <laughs> Let's do a circularizing burn just so we don't have to do... That is not a circularizing burn. <laughs> I was going the wrong way. Skirting orbits are used when you're landing, which is when the mountains can be dangerous. Ah, yes. Okay, that makes sense. All right, burn like that, and then cut and turn off the SAS so we can spin around. I need to burn retrograde to decay down into a nice circular orbit. Cool. Life without RCS is not worth living. Well, we're building up. I mean, I could just switch to my other th account where I have like, you know, 4,000 spare science and stuff. But this is uh, <laughs> this is what we're doing right now. We started a new one. Okay. So now we're going to burn. Burn. Burn, excuse me. There we go. And burn a bit more gently. Okay. There we go. Circular enough. And now, we're just going to do a whole bunch of stuff. So, Mystery Go Observation. I think we have to get to low... Mm, no, I think we've already done that one. Reset that. Open up this service bay for me. Mech Jebbery. <laughs> Mech Jebbery's good. It's very useful. It's it's just silly that you have to be... You, that you, ha you can't both see your apoapsis and do slight burns at the same time. You have to go full-on burn in the map and stuff like that. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. But we're not using the automation, because I agree with people that the, the automation stuff is too cheaty. All right, we need to get lower. Okay. We need to get lower in order to get some uh, some new situations.
because yeah, high over. We don't want to do a whole bunch of mystery goo high over. We want to get some low over stuff. So bring me down. There we go. In space, near Mun's Midlands. Yes! Crew reports. Grab it. Uh, and EVA. Give me that EVA report. Get back in. And give me that temperature scan, atmospheric scan, mystery goo observation. Keep, keep, keep. Can't do a mystery material study. Should have waited on the material study. It's worth a lot more here. You know what actually happened during Apollo 11? No, not in detail. How do I... There we go. Collect all. Okay. And now we can go another mystery goo. Really? But we've got... I think we only have two mystery goos left. One... Uh, this is kind of awkward. <laughs> two, yes. We have two mystery goos left. Do, do, do. Okay, now we want to just wait for the next situation because we're over the Midlands right now. I'm hoping we're going to get another different situation. Nationals was more confident with the calculations of somebody doing it on the paper than NASA's computers. Yeah, that does sound like a bad idea. We're going to do a whole bunch of EVA reports. Get back in. Great. Uh, Lowlands, so new mystery goo. Keep that. And let's go for an extra counter. Might as well turn on the... Oh, oh, there we go. N in space near the Munns Midlands. Is that new, really? I think we already have a Munns Midlands one. Let's, uh, let's check. Do, do, do. Eek. There we go. Review. Uh, collect all, first off. Now review stored. Do we have mystery goo observation near Mun, high over the Mun, high over the Mun? Again, no, it's material study. EVA report Midland. No, okay, we don't. Mystery goo, please. Keep it and stick it into the container. Not all items can be stored. Mystery goo one in space near the Mun already stored. Oh, okay, they're too similar. Oh yeah, keep all of those. Okay. We've already got the EVA from a similar situation, so we'll just go look for another encounter. There we go. Get another EVA. Now we could try going into a uh, a polar orbit in order to get a polar EVA and polar observations of other stuff as well. But I think that's too risky. I think I'll fluff it and never get home. <laughs> So I think we're just going to be content. Oh, we got all this extra fuel, though. I'm very upset that I can't get the 96 or whatever it actually be, like 80 uh, material study. Okay, I think that's all of our encounters all the way around now. Yes. Okay. Well, let's just take a look. If we wanted to go <clears throat> into a polar orbit, We'd have to burn... Let's see how long... No, wrong one. Let's see how long we'd have to burn for. Okay. Like that. We could do a bit less of this. That is a... A one minute, two second burn. I don't think I want to risk that. You have a ton of spare Delta V. Try making a polar orbit. That way you'll pass through every biome. Never mind, you're already doing it. Yeah, I don't know. It's a minute burn. I don't know if I have a minute's burn. Plus getting home. Especially since getting home... No, getting home will still be as easy. Let's... Let's play for all the marbles. Let's go for the polar orbit. Alright, tilt it this way. And then just let it spin. So we don't waste any electricity. You have so much fuel in that stage. We do have a ton. And you're right. It, this, this, this next stage is untouched. 
I think we, we, you know, we could get to the moon, orbit the moon, and get home on this stage. So I think we should be okay. So bring it down onto that marker. But a minute's burn. We can always abort. We can always abort. Do, do, do. Okay, bring it right onto that. I know it's going so slow. Okay, you turn on SES. Okay. Now let's uh, go to 30 seconds away from the maneuver. Make sure you begin the burn at 30 seconds ETA. Yes, yes. That I do know. <clears throat> 31 seconds here. Technically. Close enough, though. Since you want to make the start the other side. Exactly, yeah. Equidistance on the opposite side. Yes. Yes, that I understand. Get right on that maneuver node. Hold it there. Yeah, we've got plenty of fuel for this. Just got to be careful about if we have to switch stages halfway through this burn. So we're not going to have to. That's good. And cut. Polar orbit, baby. Hell yeah. Going pretty high on the other side. It was a 30 second burn rather than a 60 second one. Was it? Oh, I didn't notice. <laughs> Weird. Alright, turn on the uh, auto turn off time warp thing and let's go check out these poles, shall we? Hello. Poles. There we go. EVA. Grab the EVA report. Keep it. Get back in. And we're out of mystery goo observations. That's tragic. <laughs> well, what we're going to do then, I'm just going to add another maneuver. We're going to decay this orbit and we're going to go real close. Because I think there's a low over the situation. So let's go check that out. Make sure to tap thrust when you're facing the maneuver marker to reset the timer. Good to know. Thank you. This is a, a zero second burn. Really? <laughs> Skirting the moon surface. Bold. I like it. <laughs> oh, there was something else there. There's another encounter. Time warp will be stopped. Let's just go and hit that other encounter before we do our, uh, our close encounter. Yeah, I think overdo it. What? Okay, there it is. Okay, EVA, EVA. Keep it. Get back in. It's already being stored. That's a problem. Okay, get back in. Dump it. And then... Uh, let me click. Ah! <laughs> ah! This. Collect all data. EVA again. What? Oh, no, we need the poles again. There we go. Lowlands, Lowlands. EVA. Grab the report. Get back in. Okay. And let's... Collect all. Okay. Now, get me back to that maneuver, please. There we go. See, that time it said warp to next maneuver. But then it didn't warp. What's going on? Why can't I uh, warp to places on this thing anymore? Weird. Zoom in and position the mouse with the middle mouse button. Yes, I am trying to do that. Press the X on the right hand side that pauses the option whenever you have science available. That's what it's currently set to. Time will be stopped. But it didn't work when we. It doesn't work when you click and warp to. It only works when you time warp normally, I think. At least that's what it seemed like happened just then. It's getting further and further away. Ah, because it only works when you first set it, I think. Okay, okay, okay. That's why. That's why I was having trouble. So we can just warp to here. 
and slow right down. And now, essentially, we're going to bring our periapsis as low as we dare. Now, align SES, align retrograde. We don't really need the maneuver uh, since we're just aligning the, uh, the retrograde. Just lower in it. Lambert, did you see the uh, new Baz Battles video? About the Armenian revolt? It was pretty cool. As always. Unsurprisingly. Even before surprise mount into face. Yes, that is uh, one potential outcome. <laughs> I'm not going to deny it. Okay. We aligned? Not quite. There we go. So... Oh, ho, 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 that might be too low. <laughs> I don't see. Ah, that's that's pretty close. Just there, isn't it? This is where you can see the individual rocks. That is pretty, 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 pretty close. I don't know. No. I th I <laughs> 4,000 meters. You know what? I asked for a close encounter. The game is delivering a close encounter. Quick save and go with it. No. No, if I quick save, I can't reset. <laughs> or is it if you load and you can't reset? Unfortunately, it looks like there isn't a low over scenario. We're just getting... We're just getting more of the uh, the old ones. Oh, no, there we go. In space near the Mun's Northern Basin. Grab the EVA. I hop back in. We're getting pretty low. <laughs> no quick saving. Can't go faster than times 10. We're lower than 10,000. Oh, there's another situation. Great. EVA. Hit me up with that EVA report. Hop back in again. And uh, let's collect the data again. No, not the mystery goo. The... Ah. Still kind of awkward even with the uh, little mouse adjustment. I think we're coming from the other side. It's like a maneuver on its own. Just trying to click on this thing. There we go. Collect all. Oh no, no, don't burn. What have I done? <laughs> oh god. I thought we were going to fire ourselves straight in. You just checked. The tallest mountain is seven clicks. <laughs> well, I mean, we're going to have to hope. I think, I, can, I mean, I can see us missing it. So, I think we're okay. Four thousand seven hundred kilometers is plenty far up. Can't walk faster than one. All right, never mind. This is nonsense. The line, the uh, line, Petrograde. Let's get out of here. I'm not waiting at speed one. Double click middle mouse to reset camera. That's invaluable information. Thank you. What do I do? A line uh, slightly above the horizon, I guess. So this way, burn to raise it. We're going past it now, anyway. It's fine. Straight up, not petrograde. Good to know. Thank you. Do 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 do. You can put a touch of thrust in just to allow us to uh, to get up there. Oh, and okay, and there goes that stage. I don't really want to leave this stage in orbit of the Mun, but we can self-destruct, so that's okay. Bye bye. You served us well. Three thousand. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> That's if we come back down though. So we're never going to come back down. It's fine. <clears throat> so we wait to apoapsis, and then we had a maneuver, and we try and get over there. Well, actually, we go to apoapsis. Forget the maneuver for a second. 
Don't change this. Warp me to a parapsis. And then a parapsis we just slightly... No, 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 no. If you burn at petrograde, you'll increase a parapsis. If you burn blue, you increase your own elevation. Okay. Thank you. What I'm doing here is not what I said I was going to do. We're going to just burn very slightly on Petrograde to bring Periapsis a safe distance away. That's all we're doing here. And then we'll burn at Periapsis. And now, basically, we want to wait until Periapsis faces Kerbin. I think. I think that's right. Thought you were going to go for terminal velocity from a parapsis. Honestly, I was, but I, uh, I realised that'd be a bad idea based on what you'd said. That is what I have previously done <laughs> on all previous, you know, runs. So I'm happy to know. <clears throat> okay, so now we're gonna just do a whole bunch of loops until it faces the right direction. You can increase a purposes to escape the moon's pull whenever you want. It's always going to face Kerbin. Really? All right, more to periapsis. But increase a purposes to escape the moon's pull whenever you want. I think I'm I'm just misunderstanding how orbits work. Yes, yes. No, you're right. I think you're right. Now it's so much lighter, it's glorious. Our, uh, just the uh, the reaction wheels and the command pod can pull us around. So now we burn periapsis. And we get into Kerbin influence. There we go. Yeah, that's right. And that just leaves us in a... Uh, yeah, okay, cool. All right, bye-bye, man. It's been fun. Now we just... Oh, there was another one. Oh, well, we'll miss that one. Now we just time warp into Kerbin Sphere of Influence. Fantastic. And then we'll bring, bring old Jeb home. Fantastic. And we burn at a perapsis to lower periapsis to 40 clicks, and then we're good. Or do we want to circularize first? We've got crap tons of fuel. Why not make it a small orbit and then do it? Because that would be... Wait, does it make any difference? I'm not sure it does. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we're on a smaller orbit, so we're slower. But that's just wrong. Because smaller orbits are faster. Yeah. No, I'm just being an idiot. We just warp here. And then we just lower it to 40 clicks. And then we're good. Yes. Okay. Close up that service bay. Not that it matters, because we're not bringing that bit back. Actually, let's just make sure, now we're, while we're here, let's just make sure all of these, there's no data in any of these, should all be, yes, good. I know what we should do. So we've got loads of fuel. I want to, I want to splash down at the pole. Mmm, that could be really hard to control. Even if you don't land on the first flyby, you'll return the second realization. Yeah. All right, so we, I want to land on the pole. We've got all this extra fuel. We might as well use it for something. I think I maneuver at periapsis to achieve that. I think. But I don't know how I'm going to make sure that I land at the pole rather than at the equator. Looks good to me. How long is that burn? Not too bad. Not too bad. Move it in between apoapsis and periapsis. Okay. Interesting. Inclination burns are made in between. Okay. So we're going to burn here. And we're going to burn like so. Okay. That's interesting. So you, when you want to... When you want to increase... You go to periapsis. When you want to decrease, you go to apoapsis. And when you want to do inclination, you go in between the two. Cool. 
And I think you want to keep it for the minimum burn. You want to keep the same sized orbit and just change inclination. Is that right? No, we might as well. Ooh, no, no. Might as well uh, also end up relatively close. So, yeah. And then a bit more this way. Sounds great, sure. Okay, awesome. This should work. How long is that burn? 34 seconds? It's no problem. Give me a, uh, give me a little align to the maneuver node, please. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make certain that we splash down. Turn off this SAS. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make sure we actually land at the pole. But I can give us like a 25% chance. <laughs> Turn SAS back on. Okay, and warp me to that maneuver, please. Warp here. Okay, and get out of this. It's a 30 second burn. So we want to burn 16 seconds, six, seven, seven, sorry, 17 seconds ahead of it. Oh, it's a bit quite far, but there well. <clears throat> It'll be close enough. And look at that orbit. Beautifully not seem to move the way that I expected it to. Go on. Up, up you go. Why isn't it. I'm confused. Doesn't appear to be moving just quite how I thought it would. Let's try another maneuver and actually pay more attention. Go over here, add a maneuver, and mm, give it time, it will move. We're getting pretty close now, though. Oh, there we go, and then it goes back out again. Okay. I just need to check what is a polar orbit. Okay, this is the opposite of a polar orbit. So we just want the opposite to that. The opposite to that. Perpendicular to that. Periapsis is still pretty high. So kill the maneuver. Thank you for the tip, by the way. That worked perfectly. Rotate around to retrograde. And burn retrograde. But not too much. There we go. Okay, all good, I think. Let me here. Beautiful. We're on the way home. Fantastic. And now we uh, we dump this lot. It's already on suborbit, so don't need to worry about space debris. It looks like we're going to come down. We might end up on the South Pole. Uh, maybe. I reckon we're going to land about there, though. We'll see. Okay, so uh, no more of that SAS nonsense. We'll give it a bit of a rotate, and then we'll go. We'll get rid of that lot. Oh, we are bringing this bit home. I forgot. Okay. Oh, well. Doesn't matter. Uh, SAS. Give me a little retrograde, please. And in we come. All in all. Very successful. We way overspent on fuel, as it turns out, but that's uh, it's not so bad. Not too bad at all. And once it actually starts burning, we'll decrease. Just make sure, make sure we're aligning that retrograde. Ho oh, ho ho! There goes the uh, there goes the booster. You did collect the science lab data, right? Yes, I did collect all a whole bunch of times, so you should have got it. It's amazing how much that can happen when it kind of very much looks like you're not in the atmosphere at all. Because if you, if you zoom out, you know, it still doesn't look like we're in the atmosphere at all much. Yet we're getting all this burning going on. Very cool. All right, speed it up. Let's be having you home, Jeb. I wonder how long we'd have to do this before we actually ran out of later. I'm happy to say that. Aerodynamics will direct the atmospheric heat at your heat shield better than SAS. Yes, but no harm in both. Right? Oh, turn off SAS. Why? That doesn't look better. 
now we've got this wobble going on. Um, if you don't mind wasting electricity. Okay, 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 yeah. We don't mind wasting electricity, that's for sure. We've got loads. It's barely using any. So, yeah, as predicted. Oh, no, we're coming down way sooner than I thought. Cool. Oh, it's tempting. Keep the SAS on. You didn't notice the shape was wrong. Yes, no, it's wrong because I wanted to bring home the uh, service bay. Give me a temperature scan. <laughs> Can I? I mean, is this going to break these doors? Doesn't look like it. Can I get out? Like, if I EVA right now, what's going to happen? <laughs> Forgot your capsules are hideous. <laughs> you should try Darkest Hour. Attaway tried it and said it wasn't worth it. <laughs> Pretty much. Can I EVA right now? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to quick save. And we're going to test it. <laughs> Go on, Jeb. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Bad luck, Jeb. <laughs> Just load that. Just load that quick save. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. Okay. Pop parachute. Why not? Let's see if they bounce. No, sorry. <laughs> we all know he doesn't. But we can, uh, we can, we can EVA after the parachute deploys. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Welcome to the. Excuse me. Parachute. Oh, I was. I felt close. They do bounce. Really. <laughs> EVA. EVA report. Get back in. Of course we're bringing this home, because we need the, uh, the thing is actually in it. Collect all. Close it. All good. If you position them right, there's a... Oh, gives me a heart attack every freaking time. It's the small heat shield that we had on the bottom that blew up. Oh, we meant to test that. <laughs> oh, I didn't test the skipper fuel engine either. All right, we, didn't, we made no money out of that. And we were also meant to be splashed down. Oh, well. God. Keep both of these. <laughs> Go plant a flag. If I plant a flag, he can't get back in. Or maybe he can jump high enough. I can't remember how many flags you're meant to plant, like, in what places around Kerbin. Are we still on time donation? He looks like he's walking funny. You plant a flag. Hell yeah. He can go back in. Awesome. All right, this is Iceland, clearly. Oh yeah, he can climb this high, cool. Ooh, <laughs> you can cover them separately with no repercussions. Oh, okay, cool. Climb, ah, nearly. Board, let's just recover them separately. What's the point planting flags again? Do you get experience, I think? <laughs> Zero science recovered. Jeb did get one experience. Recover, 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 and now it's going to recover the actual thing. Planting flags is just for personal satisfaction. I think it gives experience. Right, and the I'm out of here probe, get self-destructed. The round the man, get recovered, and give me all that sexy science. 421. That's crazy. And uh, yeah, some cash. Awesome. Well, with all that beautiful new science, we can check out what we can get. We can get some... Space exploration, so we can actually walk down to the man. That seems pretty useful. Please get RCS. Which is RCS?
This one. Yeah. Yeah, RCS. I concur. I think we need space exploration so that we can uh, actually get down to the mun from a tall thing. Yeah. We're also going to need to upgrade this. 451. 451, but we need it for uh, collecting surface samples. It's real expensive. And now we can get one of these. These are 320 each, right? No, 160 each. Cool, so we can get two. Advanced fuel systems. The RCS fuel tanks are pretty great. Get docking ports, maybe you can build a space station. I don't know. I'm real bad. At, uh, I've tried that. I'm real bad at it. I think we might get... Uh... Next step is landing on the Mun. So what's going to help with landing on the Mun? Advanced, I mean, we could just go straight to advanced landing. That seems pretty good. So we don't have to worry about using the weaker the weaker landing struts. What's this? Flyby where hub. Oh, it's a plane part. Okay. Bigger monopropellant tank. More command modules could be good. Lander can for two is useful. Hmm. This one's very useful. You can get ridiculous science out of the mobile lab. That way, whenever you send a ship into orbit, you can refuel there. Yeah, I definitely want to try that. But we're going to do the MUN first, and then you can teach me how to build a refueling station. Because that does seem really awesome. Precision engineering. I don't think this is that important. For now, not for MUN. Advanced electronics. These are helpful. But they're mostly for like really long haul missions, I think, and space stations. I think advanced fuel systems could be good. The RCS fuel tanks are nice. Get the triple cabin for those tourist missions. An ELU station. I'm sure we can, I mean, we can do, we have, we have lots of time. <laughs> we can do all of these things and more. I don't think I need these. These are like real fine tuning stuff for space stations. I think that's the next step. We'll do that after we've done MUN. So what do we send our last two on? I think... How valuable are these RCS fuel tanks for using RCS properly? Can we make do with, uh, with these things? Holy, you're still streaming? Yeah, I'm going to stop soon. This wasn't the first stream, though. There was a, I took a dinner break in between. We've only been going two and a half hours on this one. I think we want to get advanced landing. And... The command pod would be useful for, for tourist missions. But if we were going to do a big tourist mission, I'd want to throw them up in a... Uh, you know, I want to do a bulk, bulk stuff. Where's the huge... There it is. Yeah, the hitchhiker. We can just put them in the hitchhiker storage container. Can you show me the other monoprop tanks? The big ones or the small ones? Like these ones hold... Oh, what does it say? Uh, 7, 740. And these ones hold... 60. The problem is they're very... The problem is they're very... Uh, on an aerodynamic. Hmm... Well, you always use the bigger ones. All right, let's do that. For, for landing, I think RCS is very, is very, very useful, at least for me. So we're going to get those. And we're going to get the bigger landing things. But I really want... Where is it? Uh... Where's the, the science, big science thing gone? Here it is. I really want to take a mobile processing lab to the moon. Because you can get like 10,000 science out of these things <laughs> if you take them one to the moon and just leave it there for 10 years. If you're not going small interplanetary, you should be fine with the small ones. Well, too late. <laughs> the mobility enhancer is useful too. Let's not take a mobile processing lab the first time. 
We'll just keep it simple. Get the good landings stuff. We've got the ladders, so we can we can we can make something finicky with the first ladders. And we'll just use it a good landing strap. Land on Minmus. Ah, I want to do Mun first. I don't know. It just feels right. <laughs> Bada boom, bada boom. One point seven science left. Perfect. Well, I think I'm going to call it a night there. Voice is going. Opa, there will be one more. Probably Kerbal stream tomorrow. And then I'm away. Then I'm away for the weekend. But uh, for now, oh, I think I will call it there. Thank you for your help, Gandalf. Much appreciated. We've got a pretty upgraded base now. Upgraded launch pad. Fully upgraded launch pad, right? Yeah, fully upgraded launch pad. Not quite fully upgraded in here. Pretty upgraded on here. What's the next one? Just unlimited. Okay. The astronaut just lets you have more active Kerbals, which doesn't matter if we're being scumlords and resetting. Already got that fully upgraded. Administration. I don't know. I've never really done much administration stuff. You can like you sacrifice one thing for other stuff, basically. So if we made like a 25, we can only go up to 25% commitments right now. 7.5% off launch costs and R&D purchases. And slightly less a minuscule amount of facility repair and construction. And also, you lose reputation on each discount. The public relations, he looks really weird. <laughs> Does that mean... I don't know. When do you think this episode will be uploaded? Uh, tomorrow. Almost certainly tomorrow. But it'll be on Twitch. You know, it's already on Twitch. In the... Uh, Twitch playback thing. Bait out grant. Just lose reputation, gain funds. How many funds can we gain if you just give up all of it? Only 38,000? Or is this... Is that 38,000? Or is that 38 million? It must be 38,000. That's not much. You search right, set out. <laughs> You really don't have much science, so. <laughs> Ooh, we might do this. Get less reputation for more science. Hmm. That could be good. It's not that good though. One science to 24, 2.4 reputation. Anyway. <laughs> science, spare parts. What's it say? Organ, organize parts. <laughs> Find lunch thief. Me man. <laughs> that is funny. All right. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. It's been a pleasure. Next time, we will land on the Mun. We'll probably land on Minmus because I'm told it's easier. And we'll do a whole bunch. <laughs> Clearly, I need to go to bed. We'll do a whole bunch of science in the glorious uh, mobile processing lab. Because what this thing allows you to do, by the way is you land, grab a load of science, put it in the mobile processing lab, and then you can kind of redo it. And you can just generate stupidly huge amounts of science. And it takes a very long time. So I think what you're supposed to do is put one of these in orbit and then like end your missions by like dropping off science there or something. But what you can do is just drop one on the MUN and then fast forward time by a hundred years and they finish it all. <laughs> So, I think we're probably going to do that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. See you all next time. See you, Russian.